Okay, we're going to talk about dermatomes and answer the what questions. What are dermatomes and why are they important? What are the primary locations to test each dermatome? And what is the deal with their variation? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So what are dermatomes? The prefix derm is Greek for skin, and tomes is Greek for section or volume of. So literally, dermatome means a section of skin. And in health sciences, the use of dermatome is, is it's used in two ways. First, dermatome is an area of skin or a section of skin innervated by a single spinal cord level. There's some skin, and we're going to outline one dermatome, the C6 dermatome, and then it's associated C6 spinal cord level. And so when we look at all the areas of the parts of the skin in the C6 dermatome, all the sensory neurons in that same area of skin are going to the same spinal cord level. So if you test a specific area of skin, you can test a specific spinal cord and spinal nerve level and vice versa. So the second definition is a dermatome is part of a somite that gives rise to the dermis. And so there we have all these somites. And if we then take one of those areas of the uh, somites and we show the somites in this cross section of this developing embryo and the part of the somites are the dermatome, myotome, and sclerotome. And the dermatome, then those cells migrate out and they're going to form the dermis of skin at that segmental level. There is the neural tube in this picture which will become the spinal cord and there are neural crest cells that will become the dorsal root ganglia cells in addition to other things. And so those dorsal root ganglion cells are connecting sensation from the developing dermis to their associated spinal cord level. So really these two definitions of what we use for dermatomes go hand in hand. A definition of a dermatome is an area of skin innervated by a single spinal cord level and it's also the part of the somite that forms the dermis. We're going to be focusing on that first definition throughout the rest of this tutorial. So dermatomes have a segmental organization that's re readily seen in the trunk where you can see just like plates stacked on top of each other, these dermatomes are segmentally organized just like the spinal cord. It is organized in the limbs, upper and lower limbs the same way, just as a little bit more funky. Um, now due to the formation of skin, dermatome maps vary. So what is the deal with the red dots then? So it goes back to this idea where there's variation in dermatome maps. I'll talk about a little bit more later. So the red dots. Let's take a look at this lower limb and there is these three red dots in this section or part of the illustration. The red dots are a location where years and years of testing have showed a consistent correlation between a specific dermatome and its associated spinal cord level even with variation in dermatome maps. In other words, sensory neurons from the skin indicated by the red dot travel to only one spinal cord or nerve level. So what does this mean for someone learning dermatomes? It means if you memorize the location of the red dots, not so much memorizing every border of every dermatome. Hooray! That was a good news in my opinion. So, for example, if you're testing the L3 dermatome and you take a look at there's the, the border and the location in this anterior view of the L3 dermatome and here are the spinal cord levels of L2, L3, and L4. Let's follow the sensory neurons from L3. They all go back over there. Then from L2 and L4, you're going to notice between supra and infra adjacent dermatomes, there's overlap. But if you take a look at this location of the red dot, it's consistent to show this medial part of the knee, the sensation goes to the L3 level of the spinal cord. So no sensory overlap with L2 or L and L4 at the location of the red dot. So sensory neurons at the red dot only go to the L3 spinal cord level. So where do you test each dermatome? So the test we're going to show, or location of the red dots, is shown in this picture. So let's, or this little graph, and then we're going to go through each one of them. So the C5 dermatome is tested by testing, touching the lateral side of the elbow in anatomical position. Above skin overlying the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. C6 is by touching the dorsal surface of the proximal phalanx of the thumb there, basically touching the part of the thumb where the thumbnail is. The C7 dermatome is tested by touching the dorsal surface of the proximal phalanx of the middle finger, or your swear finger. So the way I remember this is, if you test C7, you're not going to heaven. C7, no heaven. You shouldn't give people the bird. All right, C8 is the dorsal surface of the proximal phalanx of the little finger there. Okay, so basically C6, C7, C8 is the back of the thumb, uh, swear finger, and pinky. 
To test the T1 dermatome is the medial side of the elbow right there with the skin overlying the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And so the T4 dermatome is tested by testing the skin, the midclavicular line at the level of the nipple. The way I remember this is T4 for teat pore. It rhymes. And then the T10 dermatome is by testing by the midclavicular line at the level of the umbilicus. And the way I remember this one is T10 for belly butt 10. <laughs> it rhymes and kind of goes. So wait a minute. What about all those dermatomes we just skipped right in this area? So if you know landmarks like where the nipple is and the umbilicus is, and you know the nipple is T4 and the umbilicus is T10, you can then just guess levels in between. If the skin's closer to the nipple, it's closer to T4, closer to the umbilicus, closer to T10. Now, I'm going to add L1 because I neglected to put it in this in my textbook. So the L1 is the inguinal uh, ligament, the skin in the inguinal uh, region in that area. So the way I remember this is IL for L1. Now, L3 is the medial femoral condyle above the knee, right in that location is where you test L3. To test L4 dermatome is over the, is the skin overlying the medial malleolus. And the way I remember that is medial malleolus has four L's in it for L4. The L5 dermatome is tested by touching the skin on the dorsum of the foot over the third metatarsal phalangeal joint. Or another way I think of testing L5, it's the part of the skin of the foot that touches the shoelaces. So going now to the posterior part of this dermatome picture, the S1 dermatome is tested by the lateral aspect of the calcaneus or the heel. The S2 dermatome is by uh, touching the skin on the back of the popliteal fossa, the back of the knee. And the way I remember this is popliteal fossa, the uh, fossa has two S's in it for S2. And finally, the S4 and S5 dermatomes is the perianal region around the opening of the external anal sphincter. All right, so what about these variations in the dermatomal maps? Like anatomists have their own maps or in their textbooks and PT and OT students and clinicians and family medicine docs and neurologists, sports medicine, PM&R, et cetera. You actually Google dermatome maps and you end up looking like you're like in a Baskin Robbins store. There's just like a hundred different variations and hooray, dermatomes are like ice cream except it's not as tasty as pralines and cream. And I, Okay, I'm getting off on a tangent. A lot of variation. So... It can get discouraging when you're trying to learn this. So remember, variations. Uh, there's variations among dermatome maps. The key to remember is the red dot, the common area. So it doesn't matter if it's a picture of the noted anatomist from Asia, from Gray's Anatomy, or from Grant's Atlas. When you see these variations, look at the locations of where the red dots are. It doesn't matter which of these dermatome maps you're looking at. The red dots seem to be consistent between these difference. There's some variations like the L3 and the Gray's Anatomy, but overall there's consistency. And so at the area of the red dots, so try not to be discouraged by learning all the different dermatome maps. Memorize the location of the red dots. Make your life easier. And what I found in, I don't know, just 20 years of teaching in health sciences, that has been able to get uh, students to where they need to go. All right. How about we do a little practice, shall we? So the following part of the skin is touched. Shing! Right there. What spinal cord level is most likely being tested? Pause. If you want to think through this, I'm going to continue on. So the area skin indicated by the yellow arrow is the skin where it touches the, uh, your shoelaces. And so that's over the third metatarsal. So that is going to be the L5 dermatome that's being tested as indicated by this picture. So the L5 dermatome, dorsum of the foot over the third metatarsal phalangeal joint. That was fun. Let's do another one. The following part of the skin is touched. Shing! Right there. What spinal cord level is most likely being tested? And so pause if you want to think through this. I'm going to continue on. So it's the back of the pinky. And I remember thumb is C6, swear finger, C7, no hem heaven. So that's the pinky. So that's going to be the C8 level. And so there are all the dermatome. Uh, the red dots of the dermatomes outlined here. There's no map to show it. So it's knowing the C8 is the dorsum of the proximal phalanx of your pinky. There's the dermatomal map to help you give you an idea of what we were looking at before. Let's do one more. The varicella zoster virus, or VZV, lays dormant in a dorsal root ganglion. And when it becomes activated, cause vesicular, causes vesicular rashes or shingles in a dermatomal pattern like this. Identify the dorsal root ganglia in which the VZV in this patient was most likely dormant. So they're showing different 
uh, segmental dorsal root ganglia. Uh, pause if you want to think through this. I'm going to continue on. So when I look at this picture and I see that's the skin, I see where the nipple is. I know that's the T4 dermatome. This is just right above it. So I'm going to guess it's the T3 dermatome level because I would guess that there's the T3 and T4 approximate locations. And so, and I look at this picture, it seems to be consistent with that. And so there's the T3 spinal cord level. And let's, let's now trace sensory neurons from that T3 dermatome all the way back to the spinal cord. And there's the dorsal root ganglion. So the VZV virus lays dormant in there. And when it becomes activated, it migrates retrogradely and goes to the segment of the skin supplied by the sensory neuron coming from that dorsal root ganglion. And so this term varicella deals with the blisters, these red blisters that you see. And zoster is its derivation for belt because it makes a belt-like pattern. Okay. Well, that, my friends, shows all the dermatomes. And we just covered it in a nutshell. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>